Hi, everyone. Welcome to NDF's 2021 virtual speaker series, generously sponsored this year by the Rotary Club of Beverly Hills. I'm Nancy Lurie, NDF's Chief Operating Officer, and I'm so glad to welcome you here with us today. Today's presentation is one that I've been looking forward to and I know will benefit anyone watching. We're so grateful to be joined by Sogal Ash, who has been a friend to NDF in many years over the, in many ways over the past few years. In addition to being a speaker during last year's speaker series, Sogol has been a committed member of our Ambassadors Committee, a group of young adults here in Los Angeles who share our mission to educate people about GNE myopathy and the importance of genetic screening. She has served on our board of directors and devoted countless hours of work with me and our team on our last two annual galas. We've asked quite a bit of Sogol and she has not yet turned us down. Sogol is a holistic wellness coach and preventative health specialist. She received her master's in global medicine from USC's Keck School of Medicine and her undergraduate degree in health promotion and disease prevention at USC as well. She's currently completing her doctoral degree in naturopathic medicine and plans to practice naturopathic and functional medicine here in Los Angeles. We're so grateful for all the time and energy that she's devoted to our community and to our mission. And we're so glad to have her with us here today. And with that, I will hand it over to you, Sokol. So today's topic is called Mind and Metabolism, Learning to Make Your Brain and Your Food Work for You. Um, some things we're gonna talk about today, we're gonna define what a healthy versus unhealthy metabolism is, uh, different foods and cooking methods for healthy metabolism, causes of constipation, um, daily tools to relieve constipation. And also we're gonna get into um, the role of our mind in disease and the power of positive thinking. Um, if you guys were here last year, you know that I like to start everything I do by taking a few moments to ground ourselves. So if you guys are open to it, I'd love if you could just close your eyes and um, just listen to me. I can kind of guide you through a minute of deep breathing and meditation so that we can ground ourselves and become present to what we're about to hear. So if you can, just close your eyes, start connecting with whatever you're sitting on. If it's a chair, a bed, the floor, just start to feel it. Roll your shoulders back. Roll your neck if you need to. Just try to get comfortable. And when you're ready, let's take a deep breath in. And exhale. See if in the next breath you can make it even deeper. So breathe in. And exhale. One more. On this breath, try to take as Deep as you can of a breath, hold it in and then exhale out. Thank yourself for showing up here today. And just get ready for what you're about to hear. So open your eyes whenever you're ready and we'll get started. Okay, so what exactly is metabolism? It's basically all the chemical reactions that take place in our body and help us sustain life. So our digestive system takes in everything we eat, we drink, but not just our food, it also takes in our emotions, any experience we have, um, anything in our environment, and it decides whether to transform those things into energy so it's going to break down our food into nutrients that will give us energy, or it's going to break it down into waste. So things that we don't need. So it'll break down toxins and try to excrete them because we don't want those in our body. Um, I know um, metabolism was a big topic um, for you, for the patients in um, NDF. So just wanted to give you a quick overview of what a healthy and unhealthy metabolism is going to look like. So if your metabolism is healthy, you're likely gonna have smooth bowels. You're gonna have a daily bowel movement. You're not really gonna have any pain or acidic reflux. You're gonna eliminate your toxins properly. 
you're going to have appropriate nutrient absorption and breakdown. You're going to feel energized. You're going to feel clear. Basically, things are moving, so you're feeling good. An unhealthy metabolism, mostly stagnation. So your bowels are difficult to pass. You get constipated. You get bloated, cramping. You have abdominal pain. Who today doesn't have abdominal pain? It's so common. Um, our toxin elimination gets impaired. Our nutrient absorption gets impaired. We get tired, exhausted. We get brain fog because if we're not eliminating toxins and if we're not moving things through our body, then we get tired because they just keep leaking back into our body. They're just sitting there. They're fermenting. And that can also cause muscle pain and joint pain. So food is a powerful tool can either fuel our health or destroy it. Which one are you going to choose? This is a bit of a recap of what I spoke about last year. Um, we dove into a lot of what you should eat on the daily, but always need to reemphasize that no matter what diet you follow, whether you're vegan, vegetarian, keto, you know, you eat everything, whatever it is, certain rules are going to apply. You always want to eat real whole foods. I know we always hear that, but I'm just going to keep emphasizing it because we forget. You want to avoid the highly processed snacks and artificial sweeteners. You want to focus on quality proteins and fats because that's going to keep you full longer and it's going to keep your blood sugar steady so that you don't keep getting hungry or tired or you know you have uh, or have a crash. Um, eating mindfully. We've spoken about that before. So similar to what we just did before we started, we took a minute of mindfulness, maybe not even a full minute, but just kind of recalibrated our system um, and enjoying our meals and avoiding guilt. So I eat healthy most of the time, but I enjoy myself. So if I'm going to eat a pizza, I'm going to enjoy it because if I'm guilting myself for eating that pizza or eating whatever it is that I feel I shouldn't be eating, it's not going to go down the right way. So I want you to enjoy your meals no matter what. This is also something I always tend to stress, but the biggest rule of all is that you know your body best. Regardless of any diet fad, any conflicting nutrition information, anything even I say, I want you to start trusting your intuition and your own knowing. You spend the most time with yourself, so you're going to know your symptoms better than anyone. You're going to know what makes you feel good and bad better than I will. I can give you all the information, but in the end, like what works for me is not going to necessarily be what works for you. So I want you guys to start paying attention to what makes you feel good. Start feeling what your body needs. It's always talking to us. You know, sometimes when we're hungry, we're not necessarily hungry, we're thirsty. So maybe taking a second and seeing like, what do I really need right now? Do I need protein? Do I need energy? Am I tired? Do I need a nap? Just starting to communicate with our bodies. So quick introduction on real whole foods. Um, again, there's a whole power uh, presentation on this from last year, but foods that are alive or were once alive is what we want to focus on eating. So organic grass-fed meat, pasture-raised eggs, wild-caught fish, um, fruits and vegetables. If you can buy organic, that because non-organic or I guess you can buy pesticide-free, but what when it's not organic, the farmers have the ability to spray the fruits with pesticides, hormones, all these full of toxins, basically. Same with grains. Um, and those are the toxins that come into our body and wreak havoc. So we're about to talk about constipation. That's one of the things that will cause constipation or toxins. Anything that's going to add to our toxic burden. So even just one fruit that's been sprayed with pesticides it's going to be detrimental to our health, or it's not going to allow us to live the life we want. So we keep adding toxic things. At some point, our body becomes so toxic that it can't get rid of them anymore. Our body's intelligent. It knows how to detox. But the more we add um, toxins and pesticides, you know, we're surrounded by EMFs, all the things in our environment are already, you know, in modern day 2021, we're 
bombarded by toxins just when from the moment we wake up. So I'm just trying to make you aware of that. And if you can make the choice to buy organic or to buy grass fed, buy things that limit your toxic burden, um, you're gonna feel better, especially um, anyone who's dealing with a chronic illness, you wanna allow your body the proper environment to heal and to get better. So anything toxic is just gonna get in the way of that. And I said, are you seeing a common theme here? Nothing I'm really talking about is processed or made in a factory. These are things that are grown or they're just wild living animals. What should be on our plates? Um, always wanna focus on plant rich plates like leafy greens, low glycemic fruits. In the PowerPoint there I list, last year's I list all of this. Um, examples of everything. We want nutrient dense protein, healthy fats. You know, fats always get a bad rap, um, but we want to eat the good kinds of fats because that's going to help give us energy, keep our blood sugar stable. So let's get into the big topic of constipation. Um, I'm focusing on this today because I know that a lot of our patients tend to deal with constipation. I know it's difficult for many patients to move, and that's definitely gonna cause constipation. Um, living a sedentary lifestyle, uh, I know it's not your choice, so I wanna give you guys some tools to empower you and help you feel more comfortable. So what is constipation? Ideally, we should be having one to three bowel movements a day. Today, doctors say it should be like three a week. That's not really what our ancestors did and what any most naturopathic doctors don't believe that because three times a week you're still not excreting anything all the stuff that's in your body you want to be going every day so the tools i'm going to give you will hopefully help you be moving your bowels every day again we talked about toxins so modern industrialization has made it difficult for people to be moving their bowels every day because of all the hormones the processed foods chemicals toxins medications. Other causes can be dehydration, um, bacteria, parasites, lack of movement again. So let's talk about combating constipation. Why is proper detoxification important? I already spoke about this a bit, but a sluggish metabolism isn't going to let our body appropriately let go of the things it needs to let go of. And I keep repeating this because I really want to ingrain in it your heads so that you kind of start thinking the way, um, the way I do about this. Toxins can leak back into our system and cause the symptoms we feel, like we said, brain fog, fatigue, sluggish, you know, just not feeling well overall, like stomach pain. So we always want to focus on eliminating toxins. In any healing protocol um, I'm, I do with patients, we're always going to work on first eliminating toxins and getting their bowels moving correctly because no matter how much work we do to become healthy if we're not if our metabolism isn't working properly and we're not getting rid of toxins then the symptoms are just going to repeat themselves it's just going to be a continuous cycle so you knew i was going to talk about fiber um you know we all hear about fiber for going to the bathroom but it's just, it's crucial for everything in our health. Um, fiber is what's gonna bind the toxins and the excess hormones and help our body get rid of them. So, and it also provides food for the healthy bacteria in our gut. Again, we wanted to talk about, I know a lot of patients can't move too much. So you guys asked me what you can eat to feel full longer so you don't gain weight. So fiber is gonna be a big part of that. So it's a double, it's like a, two punch, one, two punch. So you can help move your bowels and you can feel full. Fiber is going to be found in most plant-based foods. So vegetables, fruits, legumes, nuts, whole grains. Quick lesson on the types of fiber. So there's insoluble fiber. It's going to be found in the outer coat of vegetables and whole grains. That's what acts like an inner brew. It kind of comes in, it sweeps out all the bad stuff from our intestines and it helps our intestines move things along. You're going to keep hearing me say move things along. That's our common theme today. 
Soluble fiber is found in foods like nuts, seeds, beans, some fruits and vegetables. This is what's gonna attract water and it's gonna swell into a gel. It's gonna help slow our digestion down. That's what's gonna help us feel full longer and have more energy. The gel is gonna help also trap toxins and other things we don't, find, we don't want like the bad kinds of cholesterol and fats. What is sulfurophane? So this is a sulfur rich compound. It's the active phytochemical in cruciferous vegetables. It's a potent inducer of our phase two detoxification. We have multiple phases of detoxification in our body. And it's gonna help upregulate transcription factors that enhance our ability to buffer oxidative stress. When our body's full of oxidative stress, it can't focus on the things it needs to, like keeping us healthy, keeping us feeling good. It's focused on, it's full of oxidation. So sulfurophane is an easy way where you can fight these kinds of toxins. Where do you find it? cruciferous vegetables, broccoli, cauliflower, Brussels sprouts, kale, collard greens. Broccoli sprouts are kind of magical. They're a very high, high concentrated source of sulfurophane. Uh, you can just add like, you know, a handful to your salad or any meal. Cabbage, bok choy. Um, we have a little bit of an issue though. When we cook these, we can degrade some of the sulfurophane. So if you add half a teaspoon of ground mustard seed to these cooked veggies or while you're cooking them, we can help keep those enzymes and things that we want active. So bottom line, sulfurophane is, has the fiber, it has what we need for detox. So it's gonna help us stay healthy and go to the bathroom, eliminate toxins. Also feel good. Um, hydration. So hydration really helps avoid constipation. A lot of constipation is caused by just simply being dehydrated. So when we're hydrated, again, we're ridding the body of toxins. We're helping move things along. What does water do? It's gonna help move things along. It's also gonna help us feel more full and give us more resilience to stress. Everyone recommends drinking half your body weight in ounces of water daily. I know that that can be difficult for our patients. So I'm going to give you a tool in the next slide on how to mitigate that. Um, you can also replace some water with unsweetened coconut water. Very high in electrolytes and minerals. Green juice is another way. So having a cup of celery juice, celery, cucumber, lemon, any kinds of greens. It can give you the sulfurophane we talked about in the vegetables. It can give you, it's gonna just load you with antioxidants, with minerals that are gonna help move your bowels. So if you do avoid drinking because it's hard to get up and go to the bathroom often, I want you to focus on the, the water that you do drink, maybe enhancing that. So if you can add some lemon to it, a pinch of, pinch of Himalayan salt um, or sea salt for the electrolytes, cucumber, basil, mint, things like that. Um, that's going to help hydrate you more without having to drink multiple glasses of water. Um, I'm still going to say as much as you can try to hydrate, like try to drink. I know it's difficult to get up and go to the bathroom, but do what you can for yourself because that's when you'll feel better. You'll be less constipated. Um, you can make your own spa water like shown in the picture here. So add some lemon slices, squeeze some lemon in, some mint, basil, whatever you have, you can add strawberries. Um, so then you, you're getting additional nutrients. Electrolyte powders are something I do recommend as long as they're unsweetened and they're, if you guys are interested, I can send you some brands. So again, that water that you do drink is at least enhanced and giving you what you need. Gluten and dairy, two of the most inflammatory foods today. Um, traditionally, wheat and dairy normally would contain beneficial nutrients, but modern products are super processed and inflammatory, and they tend to cause a lot of constipation. So if you're experiencing these symptoms like bloating, indigestion, constipation, reflux, you can try taking a break from gluten and dairy and see how you feel. Oftentimes, we see patients um, their constipation kind of goes away if that's what's if that's what's the trigger. But in general, people feel better. You feel lighter. 
you feel less pain. So if you want, if you're open to that, you can try it and see how you feel. Again, I keep saying you can try. I'm trying to empower you to make the decisions for your health and see what's right for you. Again, what's right for me is not going to be what's right for you. What's right for one patient is not going to be what's right for the next patient. So soaking and sprouting, eating grains, legumes, nuts, these things contain anti-nutrients like phytates and enzyme inhibitors. They detract from the nutritional value and make them difficult to digest. So when you soak and sprout, so you, that means basically soak a grain or a nut in water for about 12 hours. Some people do it even longer. You're removing the anti-nutrients and kind of like the harmful things and the things that tend to aggravate digestion. So for instance, almonds, the skin of it, the phytate tends to aggravate people's digestion. So if you just leave it in a jar of water for overnight, you're likely gonna feel better from eating that almond than you would normally eating it dry. Also adding cumin, ginger, mustard seeds to legumes can help make them less gas inducing. There's a how-to link here um, if you're interested in sprout sprouting and soaking. You can also these days buy everything pre-sprouted or pre-soaked as well. So just trying to make you aware of that, maybe focus on that if you enjoy eating a lot of grains, try removing the bad things before you eat them and see how you feel. Pre and probiotics. So these support the beneficial bacteria in our gut. They help us maintain healthy colonies. They provide us with proper digestion and metabolism. I know we hear a lot about prebiotics, probiotics. If you have more questions, I'm happy to answer them. But basically, this is just what's gonna feed our gut and feed the good stuff in our gut. Our gut can have good flora, bad flora. We wanna help populate the good flora so we can knock out the bad flora. Foods that are prebiotic, flax seeds, if you're gonna eat them, um, I eat them more ground because it's gonna be a little bit easier on your digestion. So you can buy ground flax meal or you can just grind it in a blender. Psyllium husk, onions, jicama, leeks, sunchoke, many more, you can Google them. Um, probiotic foods, anything fermented like sauerkraut or kimchi. Kefir is a great source of probiotics as well. If you guys are looking for um, a capsule probiotic, I'm happy to send some your way that I like. Um, but these things again, so they're just going to help populate our gut with the good stuff. When it's populated with the good stuff, we're more likely to have smooth bowels and not experience constipation. So you guys asked me for some herbs or different things that can help improve constipation. Again, nothing I say here is just is real medical advice. I'm giving you what's been researched and what tends to work for people. Um, but again, you, you guys have to make the decision on your own, try things out. Nothing here is an official medical recommendation or is on behalf of NDF. But so aloe vera latex. So stimulating laxatives are more for when you're feeling severely constipated. You haven't gone for days. You're in a lot of pain. These are what are more cathartic and are going to like help you go right away. So you can buy aloe vera latex, super strong. So you want to take it in a moderate amount. Senna is also a nice herbal laxative, but it's strong as well. Trifala is a bit more mild, so some people take that every night um, who are suffering from severe chronic constipation. They're never going to be your solution, though. We always want to get to the root cause of it, of your constipation or digestive discomfort, whatever it is. But I wanted you guys to have some ideas here and have some tools so that you're not feeling uncomfortable all the time. Again, if you're feeling, if you have chronic constipation, you wanna work with a doctor to get to the root cause of it, but maybe in the process of it, you take some herbs that help you relieve. Um, herbs for tummy aches, these are wonderful. So anything with chamomile, licorice, fennel, clove, anise, peppermint, ginger, dandelion, each of these herbs has different constituents. So some are carminative, so they help. That means it helps soothe our, our stomach when it hurts, when we're in pain. They help um, feed our digestive lining. Different ones do different things, but you can buy 
tummy teas these days that have these in it. You can buy fresh herbs and just steep them in hot water, see how you feel. But these are definitely um, our go-tos. They are full, full, full of good things for our gut. So I wanna talk a little bit about igniting our digestive fire. In Ayurveda, your digestion, Ayurvedic medicine is, is supposed to be like fire. You want it lit. How do we ignite that fire? You wanna get friendly with your spice rack. So focus on cooking with spices that support your metabolism, enhance this fire and add flavor as well. Turmeric, super anti-inflammatory. It's antiviral. It helps regulate insulin. Also, the things I'm saying are just a few things that these herbs do. Each herb does a myriad of things and works on many different parts of the body. Ginger can help boost your metabolism, help with gas, blood circulation. Coriander is sweet and astringent. It's going to promote our liver function. It's great for that heavy, boggy feeling we can get. Fennel seeds, amazing tool to help relieve gas, indigestion, bloating, nausea. They're also cooling. Fennel seeds in Ayurvedic medicine, um, people tend to chew fennel seeds after a meal to help relieve their gas. You can also just, like I said, steep them in hot water and make your own tea with it. Again, find what works for you, but these are great ways to help remove that basically gross feeling we can get more spices. So cumin aids flatulence, gas, bloating, detox, saffron, great for inflammation, also is great for our mood. Mustard seed we talked about earlier, but it's anti-inflammatory. It's a flavor enhancer. It's going to help keep certain enzymes alive. Cardamom is going to help decrease bloating in our water weight. I add cinnamon and cardamom to my coffee usually, or any matcha, whatever I do. I try to just add spices that can enhance my daily intake. So maybe start thinking about these. Where can you add in these spices? Do you drink coffee? Do you drink tea? Can you add some cinnamon to your tea? Can you add saffron to your rice? Can you add, you know, throw in some cumin or cayenne when you're cooking? This is going to help light that fire. So it's going to help keep things moving in your digestive tract. Because if we're not using these spices, what are we using? We're using like probably artificial flavor enhancers that are only gonna cause that constipation. They're only gonna lead to that heavier feeling, that toxic feeling. We wanna avoid putting out this fire. So cold drinks create stagnation. I always tell people to avoid only drinking ice cold drinks. I still love an ice, coffee and iced water. Um, I just don't recommend it as the only thing you're drinking because that's going to create stagnation in the body and it's not going to help things move. So often you'll notice if you are constipated and you keep drinking cold things, it's not going to help things move. It's going to kind of just let things sit there. Um, whereas if you're drinking warm teas and all the spices we just talked about are warming, Warming things are gonna help our metabolism move, just keep things moving. Again, with our blood and our blood circulation, not just our gut. So if you enjoy cold drinks, try add, adding warming herbs like cinnamon, cardamom, nutmeg. You can add ginger to a smoothie. So if you like a frozen smoothie, like frozen fruits and vegetables, add a little bit of ginger or again, cinnamon or cardamom. These things are gonna help balance out that ice cold with something warm so that your digestion, your gut is not like, oh my God, this is freezing. It's keeping this balance. Avoid eating only raw foods. I just said balance. So I love to eat raw foods. I love raw salads. But again, the problem comes when we're only eating a certain kind of thing. So raw foods are also more difficult to digest certain things. So if you're only eating raw vegetables, you might might be a reason that you're experiencing constipation and certain symptoms. So I would say try to balance it out. If you're eating a raw salad, maybe add some leftover cooked veggies to your salad from the night before or eat it with a cooked protein so that you're not only inducing cold into your digestive system. We want to keep things warm and moving. 
You can add black pepper to your raw salad. It's carminative, it's a st digestive stimulant. So black pepper is a great, great way to get things going. Often you'll see um, in certain digestive tonics you can get, um, there's always gonna be black pepper in it. It's gonna just activate a lot of things. Keeping fresh herbs on hand is a great way also. So if, I know herbs can go bad really easily. So if you've seen this photo, if you keep your herbs in like a glass mason jar with water and put it in the fridge, I kind of have like a big, it looks like I have a flower pot in my fridge because I just have these herbs in water and they last a long time. And whenever I'm eating, making a meal, whether it's breakfast, lunch, dinner, I can grab a few leaves, just open the fridge, grab a few leaves and add them to whatever I'm eating. You can add them if you're cooking warm food, if you're eating a salad, you can add it to your water, whatever you're doing. I wanna encourage you to add fresh herbs like this because these herbs are gonna help support our digestion. They're also gonna help with digestive symptoms. So basil, mint, thyme, all of these help soothe our gut. They also taste good. Um, so some daily tips. Try not to have caffeine on an empty stomach. I know that can be difficult for people. Um, everyone's guilty of it at some point but that damages the gut lining and it's gonna cause acid reflux. Again, it's gonna, it can dry things up. So it's gonna cause more constipation. So if you can lubricate your digestive tract, if you really need, you enjoy your coffee in the morning, totally fine. Just maybe think about lubricating your digestive tract before you gulp down a coffee. Um, a way to do that is start your day with warm water and lemon. You've probably heard this before saying it again, because really the things you keep hearing are really what work. So lemon going to help your metabolism get going. Warm water, again, please don't start your day with cold water. Start with something warm. It's going to get your digestive juices going. It's going to get things moving. Also cleansing. You can also uh, do aloe vera gel or juice. So doing two teaspoons of it in the morning it's gonna feel good, it's soothing, it coats the digestive tract. It's also gonna help get things moving. Earlier, we talked about the aloe vera latex. That's a cathartic laxative. The inner gel is a lot more smooth, cooling. That's something you can have every day. I personally have this every day in the morning. I feel it helps coat my digestive system and kind of gives me a barrier before I have caffeine. So I put a picture here. The one on the left is a fresh aloe vera leaf. That can be pretty strong if you're new to aloe vera. You can buy plants, it's very easy. Um, but the easiest way is this bottle I put here. You just take a spoon or two of it or you buy the juice and have a little bit of it. You can add it to green juice. You can add it to anything basically. Just try to get it in your body and see if uh, it makes you feel better. Also, if you ever feel overheated, aloe vera is a great tool. We, we put it on our skin for burns, so we can also use it internally for any time we're feeling overheated. Great thing for the summer when it's super hot outside and we can't seem to cool down. More daily tips. We talked about eating mindfully a lot before, but I'm gonna keep reminding you, our digestion only happens when we're in a relaxed parasympathetic state. So it's only gonna happen when our nervous system is relaxed. I want you to see if you can set the scene, take a few deep breaths before you start your meal. I don't do this all the time, whenever I remember. My point is, if you're just rushing to eat and eating while you're working, your food's not gonna go down right. That's the kind of thing that leads to weight gain. We're not gonna absorb our nutrients properly because we're not in a parasympathetic state. We're in this fight or flight, go, go, go mode. As much as you can, try to bring yourself into a parasympathetic state. An easy way to do that is taking just a few deep breaths like we did at the beginning of this. Also, engaging in activities that nourish your spirit. We talked about it last time too. Our gut and our emotions are inherently connected. Our gut is like our second brain. So the happier we are, the better we feel, the better our digestion is going to work. Have you ever noticed if you're in a bad mood, you're probably not, your bowels are not going to be as happy or maybe take note of it, see how you feel. 
other things, um, a contrast shower is a great way to get your metabolism moving. So you alternate hot and cold water. That's going to boost your metabolism because when you're taking a hot shower, you're dilating your blood vessels. So blood's coming out. When you're taking a cold shower, you're constricting them. So they're closing up. So if you alternate the hot and the cold, you're working your vascular pump. You're creating circulation within your body and especially within your gut. So this is a nice way. I do this personally every day. Um, you can also just take a hot shower and end with 30 seconds of cold. I know it sounds crazy, but if you try it, I guarantee you'll feel better. Also feel more energized and awake, but anything you can do, I know it's hard for patients to move. So this is um, a tool you can use when you are in a shower, or caregiver is giving a shower, alternate hot and cold water to help get the circulation going. Since we can't move and walk, this is an easier way. Move as much as you can. Um, I know patients, certain patients cannot move and are confined to a wheelchair. Anything you can do to bring blood flow and just get things moving, whatever that means for you. And spending time outside. We spend so much time indoors these days, especially with the pandemic and Zoom and everything. We need the fresh oxygen. Our body wants that because when we inhale the fresh oxygen, it's gonna exhale the CO2. So that's one mode of detoxification of our body. Just try to get fresh air. We're meant to be outside in nature. So also wanted to talk about the power of mind in disease. What are our thoughts? So every thought we have is basically a chemical reaction. It's gonna create a chemical reaction in our brain that's gonna trigger an emotion. The more we engage with this thought, thought it's gonna create a new neural circuit. It's gonna send signals to our body and then that's gonna in turn cause reactions. The more we repeat thoughts, the more they become habits. As we keep thinking the same thoughts, we're creating the same patterns. These patterns are gonna encode a blueprint in our subconscious mind. And our subconscious mind is what runs about 95% of our lives on automation. So we get up, we go eat, we do this, we go to the bathroom. We're, we're like, you know, if you ever notice what you're thinking, you, if you try to pay attention to what you're thinking, you'll notice that most of the time you're kind of repeating the same things in your head. And if you're constantly repeating negative thoughts, then we're constantly creating negative circuits and patterns. So I want you to maybe start being conscious of your thoughts. What, what are you thinking about all day, every day? Because we're all doing it. Um, is it something negative about yourself? Is it what, you know, what am I, why did I do that? I'm terrible, I'm this, we all do it. We're all hard on ourselves. I just wanna make you guys aware that that's a big part of disease. And I'm not just saying that, there's research on it. So a lot of research has recently shown that people with high levels of negative thoughts and emotions are more likely to suffer from diseases. So degenerative brain diseases, have cardiovascular issues, have digestive issues like we're talking about. And they're also gonna recover from illness a lot slower than someone who has a positive mindset. Why does that happen? So we just talked about the parasympathetic and sympathetic nervous systems. So when we're thinking negative thoughts, it's gonna send our body into that fight or flight mode, which is the sympathetic, the go, go, go mode. That releases cortisol into our bloodstream. Cortisol can be a good thing, it's a hormone for stress, but when we have too much of it, that's when we start causing issues for our health. So the more negativity, the more cortisol. The more stress, the more cortisol. Extended negativity can slow our digestion and it's also gonna decrease our immune system's ability to fight inflammation and toxins. So if you, that's kind of what I said with feeling guilty when you're eating something. If you're eating something that it, it, it tastes really good, but you're like, I shouldn't be eating this, this is bad for me, kind of thinking all these negative thoughts, you're gonna reduce your body's ability to actually appropriately digest that food, get the nutrients it needs, and just let go of what it doesn't. When you're negative about it, it's just, it's not gonna happen. It's really not. And it's gonna happen, when, and when it starts to digest, it's gonna happen slower. So 
these things can cause upset stomach, can cause chest pain, headache, fatigue, sleep, sleep problems, so much more just from our thoughts. And that's something that we do have control over. So how do we reverse that? The power of positive thinking. So this phenomenon, you know, it sounds like I'm just talking about being positive, but this is actually um, neuroscientific research. A lot is going into the power of positive thinking and the role it plays in disease, in cancer. That's why meditation has become so popular recently. There's all these meditation apps, there's different things, there's affirmations, because it, it tends to work. We're rewiring the circuits in our brain and our brain, we said our nervous system regulates everything in our body. So if our brain is negative, it's just gonna keep sending these negative signals throughout the body versus if it's positive, even if you're not feeling well, if your mindset is more positive, your body is gonna transmit that information to the rest of its organs. So again, research is proving the health benefits of positive thinking. People who focus on positive thinking in whatever shape or form have an increased lifespan, they are higher resilience to stress. So our everyday stressors, whether that's a work stressor, whether it's a food stressor, whether it's an environmental stressor, like a toxin just in our environment. Stronger immune system, definitely better cardiovascular health because we know our heart is unhealthy when we're eat, not just eating unhealthy foods, but have unhealthy, have an unhealthy emotional lifestyle, right? Anxiety, depression, all these things lead to poor heart health. And of course, having a more positive mindset leads to lower levels of depression and anxiety. Some daily tools for this are becoming a witness to your thoughts. Um, if you can start checking yourself throughout the day, you know, just becoming mindful of your thoughts, like taking a moment you're like, wow, like I've just been repeating that same negative thought all day. Or how many days in a row does this one thought keep coming in? Whether it's an insecurity, whether it's about your food choices, whether it's about how you're feeling, you know, when you're not feeling well, it's very easy to focus on what you're not feeling well about, you know? might be something even as simple as a toothache, a headache, a muscle ache. How often do you only focus on that one symptom? But then you kind of forget about everything else around you. So I want you to maybe start focusing on shifting that. So if you're not feeling well one day, or you know, often our patients are not feeling well all the time, how can you focus on shifting your mindset? Again, becoming a witness, check, check in with yourself throughout the day. And then often our negative thoughts don't even, are not really representing how we really are feeling. Sometimes they're just thoughts. I do that all the time. I'm like, I'm like, oh, I'm so stressed. I'm so stressed. And then I check in with myself. I'm like, am I really stressed? Am I really not feeling well? What's really going on? So again, this talk is all about empowering yourself and finding what works for you and what keeps you healthy certain ways to reframe situations. So I say this to patients um, I see, if they keep focusing on things like, they talk to themselves by saying, I'm never gonna get better, this isn't gonna work, they're never gonna get better. Again, we talked about the neural circuits. So you can shift that into every day is a chance to heal, every day is a chance to get better, I'm getting stronger, whatever works for you. Um, there's some positive affirmations here, Again, even little things like this is difficult. How can you shift something that's difficult that you're perceiving as difficult to something that's positive? Every challenge is an opportunity to grow. Um, this may sound weird. This may sound difficult, whatever it is. Maybe just try it. These are all just tools that you can try out, see what works. It might sound like complete BS to some people, but I promise what I say is backed by science. So try it out. Um, and then again, taking deep breaths throughout the day, giving yourself a pause. It's gonna do one of, if you don't do anything, maybe try that. Try that one thing, taking a deep breath consistently throughout the day. So a lot, giving yourself the pause, allowing your nervous system to rewire, to just take a beat. 
and see what happens. Does your digestion get better? Does your constipation get better? Do your, is your pain a little bit less? And you can, a great way to do this is create your own mantra. So, you know, figure out what it is you tend to focus on. What's the negative thing that you're focusing on, whether it's related to your health, to a disease, to work, to family, whatever it is, write that down and see if you can shift that, shift your mindset to something positive. How can you grow from that situation or how can you just reframe it in similar to what I wrote here? So let me know if you have any questions about this. I know it can kind of sound of weird. I mean, sound kind of weird and different, but I promise it has worked for a lot of people. And that's the end of my presentation. Um, some key takeaways here. Um, our body thrives on real whole foods. We talked about this. So eating things that were once alive or are alive today, plants, animals, nutritious foods. Um, again, things that are organic as much as you can. They are not hormone-free, antibiotic-free because we're gonna reduce our toxic burden the more we eat organic foods. Um, focusing on plant-rich plates with nutrient-dense protein and healthy fats, that's gonna keep us full. So eating more protein and fat is gonna help keep us full compared to just eating carbohydrates. If you guys are interested in that topic, um, my talk from last year goes into that and we can talk about it in the question section as well. Um, cooking with herbs that ignite your digestive fire. So we talked about a bunch of different kinds of herbs. We talked about cumin, we talked about saffron, mustard seed, um, fennel, different ways of combating constipation by staying hydrated. Again, if it's hard for you to move, making the drinks you do drink a little bit more powerful by you know, making a green juice, adding lemon to your water, adding herbs to your water, eating cruciferous vegetables. So we talked about the sulforaphane and cruciferous vegetables and how it's important for our phase two detoxification. So cauliflower, Brussels sprouts, cabbage, bok choy, all those kinds of things are gonna help combat constipation and also help us detox. So in turn, we feel more energized, we feel more clear, we don't feel as heavy and gross. And then we just went into how negative thoughts can lead to poor health because they're creating consistent patterns within our brain that are only gonna, are gonna keep sending negative signals and how we can reframe negative thoughts to positive ones, negative situations. I'm not saying walk around and just be this happy-go-lucky positive person. We are all dealing with difficulties in our life and I would never want to lessen those or negate those. But I'm just trying to help you guys feel a little bit better throughout whatever you're going through. It helps me throughout my day. I'm in medical school, it's stressful, it's difficult. I see patients that are, you know, going through things and what's helped them is reframing their negative thoughts and believing in themselves, believing in the power of their body, whatever it works for you. So thank you guys for being here, for listening to me. I know I threw a lot at you, so I'm happy to answer any questions. Thank you, Sogol. That was amazing. And um, I think that this is one that I'm going to watch again because- <laughs> It was so packed with so much information that um, I know I'm going to have to review some of it because it's useful for anyone. Um, we have a we have a couple of questions, and I think that my my biggest takeaway, honestly, was you know I keep hearing I I hear a lot of my friends and people sort of blame their weight gain on oh well I have a slow metabolism you know I have a slow metabolism or whatever, and I think what I heard from you is you know, our metabolism is very much within our control and there's so many things that we can do to help ourselves. So um, it's super useful, super helpful. Um, a couple of people have asked, and I got some questions through texts as well. And, and I do have to say people are really complimentary and, and saying how much, how informative they found this presentation. Yeah. So I know that's always nice to hear. Um, yeah. 
Uh, a couple of people have asked if there are any types of protein that would help them specifically with uh, restoring or stabilizing muscle fibers. Obviously, that's a specific concern to people with Chani myopathy. Sure. Um, so again, what I said, the animal protein, eating good quality animal protein is probably going to be your best bet. Um, so grass-fed meat, because animal meat, definitely red meat. Um, I don't recommend eating that every day. Um, the balance is what we talked about, but that's what's going to give you all the amino acids that you need. And that amino acids are what create the proteins in our body and fuel our muscles. So animal protein is definitely your go-to there. If you are vegetarian, things like mushrooms, um, quinoa, those are um, bigger proteins. Like they have more of the amino acids that we want. Um, a wonderful, wonderful uh, way I like to get protein is from bone broth. I don't know if anyone's heard about that, um, but you've probably heard of collagen. So people take collagen powder. You can do collagen powder. Um, again, we talked about eating real food. Collagen can be a supplement um, to help nourish your muscles, your tendons, your ligaments and everything. Bone broth is a super, super powerful tool. If very difficult to make yourself. Um, if you have someone that can make a big batch and you drink it daily, that's great. Um, these days you can buy uh, bone broth at most stores. You can buy the, order the packets, the powders. So the bone broth takes the most um, collagenous, the parts that have the most collagen from animals' bodies and basically makes a broth out of that. So you're getting all the amazing things that you need without necessarily having to eat a steak every day. And it's very soothing um, to the digestive system. It really powers the gut lining. So again, talking about constipation, bone broth does wonderful, wonderful things for any kind of digestive issue. Um, it's great for our skin, great for aging, uh, feeling energized. So I would definitely recommend if you can eat animal protein, eat animal protein, um, supplement with bone broth, a nice way to drink it um, is to drink it first thing in the morning. I know it sounds kind of weird, but if you're experiencing digestive issues, it's a wonderful way um, to support your gut or throughout the day. You can cook with bone broth as well. You can um, add a little bit um, to a normal soup. You can add it to any kind of stir fry, whatever you're making, you can add bone broth to it. Um, Yes. Does that answer? Or do you want more? <laughs> no, I think that's great. I think what we've proven today is that we need to have more sessions with you. And I know we talked about a lot, of, we touched on toxins and we had spoken earlier about maybe doing a webinar or a podcast where we can dive a little deeper into that. And, you know, hopefully you'll just be back again. Um, I don't want to take up too much of, more of everybody's time. We're just up against the hour mark, but we have a, we have a couple other questions if you don't mind. Um, okay. We talked about muscle. What about is there anything you recommend specifically for brain health? Oh, so many things um, in terms of food or herbs. I, think food, I mean, either, but the question was about food specifically. Yeah. So um, our brain, again, protein, <laughs> um, definitely want you to eat the protein, but good fats are going to fuel your brain. So avocado cooking with avocado oil, coconut oil, taking a tablespoon of coconut oil, um, throughout the day, anything, uh, nuts and seeds. Um, you know, people say walnuts are good for your brain and it's shaped like a brain. Um, it's actually good for your brain because it's good fats. Um, our brain does survive, does mostly enjoy carbohydrates, but if you want to keep it healthy, I'd suggest eating like the non-starchier vegetables. So that's more of your leafy greens. Um, the starchier vegetables are the ones like potatoes and sweet potatoes and squash. So those may be a little bit more limited because those can cause weight gain, but focus on the non-starchy vegetables and low glycemic fruits. So low glycemic fruits are like berries, pomegranate, these kinds of things. But yeah, all, it's kind of everything I said, but if you were to take away one thing, good fats are gonna definitely fuel your brain. Sounds like the things that are good for you are just good for all of you, really, right? Um, yeah. And then the last question I'll ask you, because it kind of ties to what you just said, is um, 
is a concern about weight gain. Even, um, you know, we have people who, even though they eat small portions and eat regularly, you know, how can they maintain a more stable weight? Is there something, I mean, I think it's a lot of what you've already said, but specifically for people who are concerned about gaining weight, some of the things that are healthy aren't really low in calories or fat, right? The things that we be concerned about. Yes, definitely. Um, so I think eating things like we talked about that keep you full longer. So adding fiber, um, to your meals, um, and some of the things that a lot of things that are healthy are lower in calories, like the fruits and vegetable. I mean, not necessarily fruits, but vegetables for sure. The leafy greens, um, but eating things that keep you full longer. So eating a good amount of protein, a good amount of fat and vegetables with every meal. If you eat protein and fat with every meal, you're going to stay full longer. You're going to get less hungry because your blood sugar is going to stabilize and you're not going to gain it as much weight because you're not loading it with carbohydrates. Um, I lost my train of thought. Um, I was going to say protein. Oh, the fiber. So fiber keeps us full longer, also helps the metabolism going. So eating the foods that are full of fiber that I mentioned, definitely going to help reduce the weight gain because they also help get rid of toxins. Um, and they help us use the energy from protein and fat. When we eat more protein and fat, our body's, our body's first resource for energy is glucose, is carbohydrates. So if we keep giving it carbohydrates, that's what it's going to use. It's going to store the fat for a rainy day. But if we limit the carbs, then it's not going to have the carbs and it's going to use, it's going to go to the fat and it's going to start breaking down the fat for energy. So that's a great way that you can mitigate um, the effects of having a sedentary lifestyle. Um, I would say if you can limit your carbohydrate intake to the lower calorie ones, for instance, the low glycemic fruits and the non-starchy veggies and focus on fats and protein um, that's what the keto diet's all about. Although I don't recommend that for everyone, but the keto diet, the reason people don't eat the carbohydrates, they completely restrict it so that they can lose weight from their body shifting to primarily using carbs for energy to using fat for energy. And then you're breaking down the fat and your body is not going to store it for a rainy day because it needs it right away. Does that help? Of course. Yeah, no, that makes perfect sense. It all makes sense. And, and it's, it's so logical and, and you explain it in such a way that um, is so accessible. So I can't thank you enough for being with us again today and for giving so much of yourself to our organization and our community. It really, it means a lot and, and it's so helpful. And I know that people are going to have more questions after this. <laughs> if they do, I'm sure they can email us and that, you, and I'm sure you will uh, be happy to give answers and, and we'll work on a podcast or a webinar about toxins sometime in the future. So thank you. Um, I want to, did you have anything you wanted to add? So I was just going to say, thank you for um, letting me be here. I'm definitely, I'm always honored to speak to you guys and thank you for entrusting me and always happy to answer any questions. Um, you know, always send in the topics you want. I'm happy to talk about them on a podcast or, you know, do a pre-recorded thing as well. Um, I'm here for you guys. Thank you. And thank you all for joining us today. We hope you found it as helpful as I obviously have. Uh, this recording, along with all of our speaker series events, live on our virtual learning library, which you can access through our website, curegnem.org. The recording for this will be up just as soon as we can get it there. We hope to see you here again for the rest of our upcoming speaker series events. Thanks, everyone. <laughs>